what can you learn from your sleep quality? This is Bertala Meshko and you're watching the channel of the medical teachers. Fitbit, Misfit, Live By, Early Sense, Jawbone, the market for sleep trackers is skyrocketing and people finally track the quality of their bedtime. However, getting conclusions from sleep measurements is tricky. I've been doing sleep tracking for four years. I know that it is far from easy and there are too many burning questions. When should I go to sleep? What is the REM phase? How much deep sleep should I have? As we are all genetically different, we need different factors during our sleep to feel rested the next day. For some people, the percentage of deep sleep will make a difference. For others, change in air pressure during the storm. When you look at the graph in your app, whether it's Sleep as Android, Fitbit or Apple Watch, you will see something like this. On an average sleep curve, you can see four phases. Being awake, light sleep, deep sleep and REM phase. Simpler sleep tracking apps like Sleep Cycle do not measure REM. It depends entirely on the given person how much deep sleep is necessary, but it's usually the decisive factor in feeling well rested the next morning. It is also useful not to wake up directly from a deep sleep phase. A smart alarm helps with that. The REM phase is essential and thus to have a sleep tracker that measures it. This is the part of our sleep where we dream, process and store memories. Having enough deep sleep is crucial as usually jump from deep sleep into the REM phase. You have to find what changes this for you. And in some apps, you can label the events which might influence sleep, late workout, alcohol, medications, or a crying baby. That's also the reason why sleep tracking is very useful. We can draw long-term conclusions, get better at sleeping, and make the most of our day from the next morning. So sleep well and don't forget to track it.